Hi, I'm Josh McLean, President and Yacht Broker at David Walters Yachts, and today we're aboard our latest listing, 2015 Hyla 70 named Independence. With me today, my friend Peter Grimm. Hi. Peter here is with North Sales uh, and has been heavily involved in the initial design concept of the sail plan and the rig, um, has a long history with the yacht, and Robbie McWigan. Robbie? Hey, welcome aboard. Robbie here uh, has been the captain with the boat since her commissioning and has been integral in her maintenance, care, and upkeep and is largely responsible for her being in the spectacular condition that she is in today. We are going to be doing a video walkthrough of the deck and the interior. We're going to go take her out sailing, highlight some of her key features, and describe to you what independence is all about. All right, so the rigging on independence and the sail plan was designed for strength, offshore cruising, and simplicity of use. If you could just describe to us in detail you know, what the thought process was and how the sails were configured and why they were cut in the way they were and the cloths that you chose. When the owners came to us for the design brief, it was really important. We keep the number of sails down in the inventory. We wanted to make sure that two people could use the boat easily. So starting from the bow, we designed a 135% Genoa, which is made out of a carbon fiber spectra laminate. What I really like about that is it holds its sail shape really well, whether it's fully deployed or reefed. I knew the sail would spend a lot of its time reefed. The next sail aft is our roller furling staysail. We chose to build that out of Dacron so it could double as a Genoa staysail and a storm jib. And that's really a tremendous concept to have two sails do one thing. The mainsail was in-mast roller furling, and again, we wanted to stay with the carbon spectra laminate for roller furling. Again, we knew this sail would spend a lot of time reefed. We also knew that the boat had a hydraulic backstay, which was really important to keep the headstay tight, keep the mast in column, and make sure that the efficiency of the sails was fully realized all of the time. What I really like about this boat is it's very easy to sail, it's easily driven, and the sail combinations are very simple for two people to operate. The sails were designed and built to have every possible construction detail done to it so the sails don't have to be serviced every year. And in fact, these sails have been off the boat I think twice since it was new. So I think that's really important, uh, especially because you have two people cruising the boat and to be honest with you, taking sails off a 70-foot boat is a pain in the butt. Now, something else is because they have the halyard locks, you don't have the tails, and when you put the sails back up, you know that it goes to hole number six. It's very repeatable, so it's dead simple, again, for people that don't sail a lot to know. The thing that's really great is that once it's locked in, it is set. And so, you know, with a clutch, it's moving a little bit. It's never exactly the same. So even with a mark, it, it doesn't, you're, you're never repeating it what you think you're gonna do. Up here on the bow of Independence, there's a couple of key features I'd like to point out. One of the highlights of any Hylus is the quality of their stainless steel. Now, all the deck fittings, this is all 316 stainless steel very high quality, really mitigates rust, and the quality of the welds as well. I think that's really important to highlight. It's almost artwork. We also see here we've got some very substantial bow cleats and fair leads integrated with the cap rail. Moving up to the ground tackle, we have a split bow roller, 300 foot of chain with a big Rockna primary anchor. Aft of the ground tackle and windlass, we have this massive sail locker, which I'm told you could actually put a nine foot six surfboard down in but it's a great spot to put your extra sails, lots of room for fenders and extra dock lines. You have a nice ladder leading down, and then aft of the chain plate is actually a collision bulkhead, and that is a substantial design feature of the Hylus 70. So if you were to puncture the bow, this collision bulkhead protects the integrity of the rest of the, the hull. Another feature to highlight here is the Furlex hydraulic furling system. This is a great setup made for simplicity and ease of sail handling. 
Gives you a lot of versatile control from back at the cockpit. It's one of the features the owner is really proud of on the boat. Okay, Josh, excellent. Uh, just to add to your comments, I'd like to point out a couple other things. Uh, with the ground tackle set up, obviously we have the, um, it can be controlled up here with some foot buttons. You can also put the anchor up and down from the helm with some switches. If you need to get the anchor deployed in a hurry, we have the winch handle that plugs in the top and you drop the, release the gypsy and uh, the chain flows out quite quickly. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is we have a camera on the pulpit up here, which is very handy when you're going to pick up a mooring. You can bring up the imagery from the camera on one of the helm displays. And again, that's very convenient for locating the mooring ball once it's disappeared under the bow of the boat. So as you move forward here from the aft deck, I do want to point out a couple of key features of the Hylus 70. One thing that I really like about this yacht is the width of these side decks and the fact that you've got these nice high stanchions, uncoated, uh, they're waist high, and then you also have these nice teak grab rails as you're moving forward. So you also have a lot of confidence when you're moving forward. It's not, uh, it's not cumbersome. You're not tripping over any of the hardware. Um, here we have these nice midship cleats with the fair leads again integrated into the tow rail. More teak grab rails as we come forward on the fore deck. Talk about what we're looking at from here. Beautiful teak decking across the decks. Um, we went with a gray caulking, which is, provides a really nice aesthetic and also keeps the, the uh, deck nice and cool when you're out in the hot sun. Sometimes the teak will end up getting a little bit warm with uh, on the bare feet when you have the black caulking. Um, we have our derade vents here, which provide ventilation for the forward cabins. Uh, nice classic aesthetic as well and the stainless protection for these derailed vents provides a nice uh, storage place for halyards, masthead halyards, spare genoa and whatnot. Uh, we also have like two large hatches for the main salon up on the coach roof and a large hatch for the port cabin and a small hatch for the head. Uh, you can open all these up when you're on the hook somewhere and you don't want to run the generator. Provides nice ventilation throughout the boat. Beautiful manship hatches, stainless trim and again a very nice aesthetic. On the aft deck of Independence, I want to point out a couple of key features. Um, first off, the most notable is this nice big swim platform back here. We've got several teak steps leading down, and the way this is configured with these nice Simpson electric davits, low profile, maintains the aesthetics, is I can move down the swim platform without ever having to, you know, get in the way of the dinghy here. Uh, on the swim platform, we have these nice courtesy lights, so if you're coming in at night or at dusk, um, it makes it nice and, and, and safe to board the boat. We do have a fresh water, hot, cold, pressurized shower. Nice stainless steel railings. And then we also have nice stainless steel protection um, at, the, at the edge of the transom here to protect from the, uh, the landings of the dinghy. Um, there is a uh, swim ladder as well that uh, drops down, extends about five feet down. Um, nice, folds flush, um, stays out of the way. As we come up, you'll notice we've got boarding, ga boarding gates on either side. Again, nice stainless steel here for the push pit. Integrated with the push pit are these nice transom seats with cushions. Down below, we have both speakers here, which is zoned in with the entertainment system of the yacht. We have four stern cleats, fair leads integrated with the cap rails and these nice stainless steel end fittings. We have radar masts here for uh, both our um, satellite television and our broadband high-speed internet. Integrated with the swim platform of the yacht, it's a nice transom garage. And that transom garage is also accessible through a hatch over the aft deck. And then to port and starboard are these cavernous lazarettes. So if I open these up, you get a sense for their size. To starboard is a, is a, is a full-size lazarette, but at the to port we have our propane tanks. I'm also going to point out our hydraulic backstays, uh, which are adjustable from the helm seat. Um, it makes it very nice to be able to trim the sails out uh, without actually having to leave the helm. Also uh, integrated, you'll notice the uh, single sideband antenna with the insulator. As we move forward, we see a nice low profile manship hatches, recessed traveler, uh, eliminates any hazard of stubbing your feet as you're moving into the cockpit environment. All right, so here we are at the helm station of Independence. As you can see, dual helms, each providing a uh, commanding view while under sail and maneuvering the vessel. 
along with the ability to go down to the leeward side to check your sail trim. The controls for the sails are located conveniently right here. Uh, head sail, stay sail, main sail, furlers, all right here, all hydraulic, along with the windlass. So you can put the anchor up and down from the helm, which is quite convenient at times. The controls for the sheet, head sail sheets are just forward to the helm station, making it easy to deploy on your own from here. And the mainsail sheet is controlled just aft of the uh, port helm seat here. All quite accessible. We also have some switch, a switch panel down here to control all our nav lights, along with deck lighting, mass lighting, engine room blowers, all conveniently located here as well. Again, with maneuvering the vessel, we have uh, bow and stern thrusters uh, located at each helm and along with the throttle, making it very easy to maneuver the boat and control from either helm. Navigation suite is Ray Marine. We have two touchscreen displays here. We have uh, radar, autopilot. You can control the entertainment system from here. As we mentioned earlier, you can bring up the cameras, which are located around the boat, in particular on the uh, bowsprit, to see the moorings when you approach them. Robbie and I are in the cockpit of Independence. Uh, you'll notice it's a, this beautiful lounge. Uh, it's, it's, it really incorporates a lot of features that are important for uh, offshore passage making, but it's also nice and open and you've got these great features such as this zoned entertainment system with the rest of the ship's um, um, stereo system. We've got this nice canvas Dodger Bimini that's done by Andy's Canvas in Fort Lauderdale. This forward windscreen here does open up to where when you are at an, on anchor or on the mooring, you get a nice light breeze that fills the cockpit, keeps everybody nice and cool. There's a connector piece as well for offshore passage making and a full set of eyes and glass windows um, to enclose the, uh, the cockpit and helm environment uh, when it gets a little bit dreary out. You can easily sit uh, between 12 and well, 10 and 12 individuals here in this nice lounge. Uh, as you can see, we've got the teak cockpit table fully opened up, these nice leaves on either side. And in the center is a ice box with, uh, with drain. You open this up, it's perfect for nice waters, beers, cocktails, ice. These leaves fold down, make it nice and easy for maneuvering around. And then I'll also point out this stainless steel rail here to brace yourself when the boat is heeled over. You also point to these oversized scupper drains. This is uh, despite the, uh, the creature comforts we have here, a real passage making vessel. The size of these drains make evacuating any uh, water that may come in quite efficient. All right, here we are in the forward area of the cockpit. We're gonna talk a little bit about the instrumentation and sail handling that occurs in this area. Here we have another Raymarine plotter. You can set this up to whatever screen you desire. I personally like to leave this one on wind instruments, nice and visible from the helms. Uh, you can also pull up any data you find needed on these displays over the companionway. Wind, speed, depth, temperature. This is our main outhaul. We use this for setting the main, uh, which is done by, uh, you can, as I mentioned earlier, you can do that from the helm or you can come to this station and uh, control the outhaul with the winch buttons here and the furler with two buttons located on this side. Stepping down the companionway, it's a very easy transition from the cockpit to the interior. You have five contoured stairs with integrated grab rails into the companionway, as well as grab rails to port and starboard. The main hatch is a smoked Lexan hatch with a retractable washboard, which locks in and out of place. Um, you have got great clearance when you're transitioning to and from the, uh, the interior, um, so you're not hitting your head. Um, it's bright, it's open. The uh, main saloon itself, we have uh, teak with satin varnished interior, louvered cabinetry, grab rails, the full length of the interior, fixed port lights, raised saloon with beautiful styled wraparound windows, offering exceptional seascapes when you're both standing and seating. The settee here to starboard makes for a great lounge. It's, uh, it's almost seven feet in length, with a nice little cocktail table here. And then to port, we have our dinette with L-shaped settee. And we also have two seats that fold uh, and can be stowed away when not in use, uh, but also could be utilized as cocktail tables, which is a pretty clever utilization. The cabin sole 
is bamboo with teak inlay. As we step back into the galley, I'll point out a couple of key features. Uh, this is blue pearl granite countertops with fiddled edges. Um, makes for an easy cleanup and also um, keeps everything up tight and tidy when you are offshore. All the cabinets, again, these are all louvered for proper ventilation. There's a lot of depth here, so you can put a full-size plate. Um, there's lots of stowage. We've got deep drawers on either side. Uh, in terms of appliance, we have all stainless steel. We have a wine chiller, and then we have four pull-out cold storage boxes. This is actually a beverage cooler, and the other three are configured as freezers. And this here, we actually have an ice maker. For the raft, this is a trash, camp, trash compactor, dishwasher, double basin stainless steel sink, more cabinetry, an espresso machine, two front load 12 volt DC refrigerators, pantry, additional storage, bolt top cabinet, microwave, we have a five burner propane stove with oven, and excellent storage down below for pots and pans. As we move to the forward passageway, it opens up to the forward VIP stateroom, which has a centerline queen, which is advantageous as opposed to a standard V-berth because you have access to port and starboard, so you're not clamoring all over each other when you're getting out of bed. There's excellent cabinetry to port and starboard. We've got hanging lockers, all louvered, beautiful satin varnish teak interior, fixed port lights, and a large overhead hatch for superb ventilation throughout the yacht. One of the great features of the uh, forward cabins here is this shared head. So we actually have two heads with a shared stand-up shower. Um, this can be utilized here as a day head, and then this is, uh, can be in-suite here for your guests. Each head here has a uh, Jabsco freshwater electric flush, um, dedicated vanity, nice cabinetry here, medicine cabinets with, uh, with mirrored doors. LED overhead lighting, teak towel racks, shower head, and opening port lights. There's also a linen closet that can be utilized for towels and shower supplies. As we move further aft to the aft passageway, I'll point out to the starboard side here, we've got a great guest cabin. This is a versatile cabin that can be either used for crew would be ideal for grandkids. So you've got upper and lower berths, you've got a nice hanging locker forward. But a really neat feature about this is the fact that you have an ensuite head that could also be utilized by the owners in the owner's stateroom when they do not have guests or crew aboard to create sort of a his and hers uh, head arrangement. So looking at the ensuite head here for their uh, bunk cabin, we do have uh, another freshwater Jabsco electric flush head, sink with blue pearl granite countertops, Mirrored vanity, teak handrail, uh, or teak towel rack, opening port light, and then a separate stall shower. One of the best areas of independence is absolutely this aft owner's stateroom. So we have a centerline king with this great big open space. We've got opening port lights to port and starboard, these two big opening deck hatches, um, his and hers reading lamps on uh, with LED bulbs, lots of storage space here louvered cabinetries and hanging lockers to port and starboard, big, tall, almost the size of a wardrobe with uh, opening drawers below, cabinets here, and then you have uh, shelf space with a vanity to port, and then under the berth, we have a nice big locker here. In the owner's head, we have this nice blue pearl granite vanity sink, four medicine cabinets with mirrored faces, teak towel rack, freshwater Jabsco electric flush toilet, and a very large shower. Inboard, we have a real nice locker for um, personal supplies or possibly linens. All right, we're here in the forward port guest cabin and we've got this really nice double berth, comfortable, more than comfortable for two people. It's got a full size washer and dryer underneath as opposed to the combination. It's nice having two separate units. We've got storage, louvered storage, lockers, cabinetry above the berth, tall hanging locker forward, 
three opening port lights and a good size manship deck hatch. All right, so here we are in the engine room of Independence. Um, quite spacious, easy to work on things, therefore uh, everything is, tends to be maintained frequently. The uh, starting forward, we have the dual ray course. Uh, very convenient if you have a water issue or clogged filter. It's as simple as turning the ball valve to the fresh filter and at your own leisure. Uh, and when a time's appropriate, you can change the filter on the other ray core. Uh, main engine is a Yanmar BY260. Fantastic engine, moves this boat along nicely. It's quite quiet uh, compared to the other mechanical engine that is offered for this model. Um, that's equipped with a high output alternator that's driven by the PTO off the engine, charges the house bank. And uh, behind that is our Northern Lights genset, 12 uh, kilowatt, and that genset powers everything quite nicely throughout the boat. Thank you for watching this video walkthrough of the 2015 Hyla 70 Independence. Again, my name is Josh McLean. I'm the president and yacht broker at David Walters Yachts based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with offices in Annapolis, Newport, and Marina del Rey, California. Should you be interested in more information on independence, I would welcome you to contact me at 954-527-0664 or email me directly at josh at davidwaltersyachts.com. I'd also like to extend my personal thanks to Peter Grimm of North Sales and Robbie McGuigan, the captain of independence not only for their assistance in this video walkthrough today, uh, but for their continued efforts in um, ensuring that Independence is just as pristine as she is today. She is truly a spectacular yacht in pristine condition, shows like new, and is ready for world travel. Thank you.